podcast is brought to you by Midwinter. These guys were a startup, an entrepreneurial startup some 10 years ago, way before it was even cool to be a tech startup, and have since then gone on to win every single award year after year after year when it comes to financial advice software. I use them, um, I know a lot of people that have, and if you haven't already jumped onto the new way of doing business, which is all cloud-based and API, so it all talks to each other, then go look at yourself in the mirror and sort yourself out and go get Midwinter. So morning, guys. Thanks for jumping on the call. Awesome to see uh, a few new faces on the line. Uh, thanks very much for, for tuning in. Uh, we're super excited today. We've got Paul Gilbert. Uh, from Pinstripe Media and uh, also his personal consulting company, Request Media, on the line to talk about personal branding and how you can build your personal brand over time. A little bit of housekeeping, guys, before we get started. Thanks to everyone that um, that participated in the Twitter poll around the, the times for this session. Uh, the result of that was that we had over half of the people wanted to keep it at the same time. Um, so that's awesome. We are going to do another poll in the near future, just about um, the length of the session. So expect something in your inbox about that. Um, and we're also toying around with potentially changing our platform as well. So apologies in advance to the Blab diehards. Uh, we do love this platform. It is um, quite sexy, but we've just uh, had a few sort of tech issues um, that, we, that we haven't been able to quite work through yet. Um, so we'll keep going. James likes that. Thank you, James. <laughs> um, so cool, guys. Let's let's get into it. Uh, like I said, Paul Gilbert, who uh, works with uh, Pinstripe Media. For those that don't know, Pinstripe Media is David Kosher's uh, media company, and they've got their finger in uh, a whole bunch of different pies. They they run a number of online content websites, um, Thrive, Hip Pocket, Business Builders, as well as Koshy's personal finance programs and a whole host of other ones uh, as well. So that keeps Paul, I'm sure, very much on his toes. And uh, Paul's responsible for, for all the me media. Paul said that he, he doesn't like social media. It's just media, um, but all the media and, and getting sort of the word out there. So thanks very much for joining us, Paul. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. I'm going to get in trouble for you saying I don't like social media. Social media. I'm being the social guy for so many years, and I don't like social media. Uh -huh. So Paul's got a pretty extensive background in the media and content media space. Worked for for the the biggest content media provider in the world. Uh, they they now I believe they are um, King Content. So uh, had the privilege of working with Craig and uh, Paul over there, building helping them build uh, one of the largest now I think in the world content companies. Um, Awesome. Which is uh, a bit of a, a bit of a brilliant ride for them. I think in four years they've they've gone from sixteen people to to having offices right around the world. So awesome. Cool. So so clearly clearly the man knows his stuff. Um, and I caught up with Paul uh, a few weeks back to, to to just sort of chat. Uh, I know you know for for myself I'm you know pretty active on across social media where I can. I do my best. Um, but I don't know if, uh, like everyone else out there, I still find it a bit confusing, you know, what works and so, um, you know, what we can do to sort of build our presence. And that's what Paul works with in Pinstripe Media on, you know, getting the message out with their media, but also runs a consulting company on personal branding. And I know that that's something, you know, as a, as financial advisors, something that's really important. So we're, we're really excited to uh, to get some of Paul's tips and, I know that the session that, that I had with him, um, just chatting about what we're going to talk about today, I got some really good takeaways. So, so we're we're uh, excited to get your gold, Paul. Uh, I'm excited that you use some of my tips and you're seeing the results. <laughs> That's what I'm excited about. Yeah. Awesome. Um, oh, yes, I'm also very excited about uh, my passion is the personal branding uh, and social space. Yeah. Uh, so tell us more. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so uh, although uh, I'm working with Pinstripe Media, I, I'm a content marketing or, or what you call digital marketing director in title. Mm -hmm. um, over the last six or seven years, I used to run a company called We Manage Social um, and built that up, and it was kind of at the, the beginning stage of social media. Um, I now like to call it communications media or just simply media because yeah. that's where the, the trend has gone. Um, but that passion remains with me. It's, it's the reason why we're so successful at what we do at Pinstripe or what we do 
even at King Content or OMD or any of the companies that I've worked with, um, is the, the hands-on uh, practical knowledge that it takes to be successful in the digital space. Yep. And whether that's essentially um, social media channels or whether it's video or production or whether it's Ustream or whatever it is, it's the getting into the nitty gritty and the practical commitment to, to get that to work um, is, uh, is why we're all very successful at what we do. Yeah. Um, so a little bit about um, at currently we're at Pinstripe Media, hmm. um, which is a great opportunity. We're the kind of leading uh, content marketing agency for the financial and business sectors within Australia. So uh, our role here is, is uh, as a content provider, but also um, a campaign, a content campaign company. So we're doing some really great work right now. I think we were just covering it before we started recording about uh, very early morning calls with European officers. Yep. Um, so things are, are really moving along. Um, but my passion is to, you know, is the interaction in the digital space and how it's done uh, effectively and well without all the hype. Um, yes. Because there's a lot of people that talk platform, they talk channel, um, they talk quite high level. Um, I think for me, it, it's really about understanding, uh, you know, what you want to achieve in that space and then putting in the hard work to, to get there. Yes. Um, and then continually learning because uh, unlike any other sector, uh, the digital sector changes. I think it probably changed this morning while I was on the call. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely keeps what I, going. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we when we spoke, when we caught up, uh, you we were talking about, you know, with all of this change and the focus and, and so many people being on uh, the, the social media sort of platforms that potentially s smaller businesses that are a little bit more nimble are actually better positioned to benefit from, you, you know, using that as a platform. Is that? Yeah, look, I, I think everybody's heard it before, but I'll say it again. Um, if everybody is aware or wakes up to the fact that the digital, the digital channel itself um, is is a level playing field. Um, yeah. Matter. So we're working with Microsoft. We're working with Energy Australia, Vodafone, and what have you. They have exactly the same issues, maybe substantially more budget, but exactly the same issues. Uh, getting their brand through that noise, or, or getting their content to be seen. Yep. as a small business. And for that reason, a small business has absolutely the same amount of opportunity to do a clever piece of content um, or put in the, the time and the effort to reach their target audience. Yep. Uh, I don't think there, there is a difference. And in fact, most of the work that I do on the personal branding side is a lot more successful at engaging with audiences than potentially, and don't say this to the brands, <laughs> um, <laughs> is engaging, engaging with the, the larger um you know, the, uh, the larger brand enterprise space who uh, yeah. are still looking at that mass market. So people like, um, I don't normally talk about any of the personal brands that I work with because they're executives or they're, they're, they're people that don't need the world to know that somebody else is pulling the, the levers behind what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I mean, David's personal brand well outstrips uh, the, the, the brand work we do for the KBB, KMM, um, mm. shoestring and, and all of those uh, yeah. just because of that personal brand connection and that just shows you that the the the, uh, the use of effective channels in digital is, yep. is something that's available to everyone I don't care if you're a butcher or if you're a real estate agent or if you're whatever it is or a financial advisor yeah um, effective use of the channel I think you were saying you know I gave you some tips and you've upped your numbers by a thousand and and what have you we, yeah. didn't, we haven't even talked about how you proactively target the right niche audiences and build up engagement levels across multiple channels. And if we can get to that kind of conversation with those businesses, that's a yeah. lot more effective than having a big brand conversation about, oh, we're going to do marketing. You know, you've got to compete against you know, the big brand space. So yeah. exciting times. I mean, the, the digital space is, is now outstripping television um, in terms of broadcast media consumption. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, so I'll let you ask so, another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We'll ramble on. <laughs> um, so tell me, Paul, what's the process when you're doing this, the personal branding piece with, with your clients, what's the process that you go through to, to yeah? Yeah. So look, um, I've had, I actually had the process done for me a long time ago and I was really quite disappointed in how, how that worked. Uh, quite formulaically. So for me, the first and foremost question is a why question. Um, so why are you 
uh, working on your personal brand? And the answer is really important because there's, there's personal branding, which I call static personal branding online, which mm -hmm. is a cat, catch-all branding, which is what you've seen 90% of the content um, out there online talking about, which yeah. is making sure that all the, the, the websites are formulaic and, you know, you're always broadcasting stuff and uh, it's good for your career. Well, that's, that's a really static way of looking at brand and the internet isn't static. So we need to find out why you as a person want to work on your personal brand and, and that may be, so for example, I'm working with, the, uh, uh, in the future, we'll be working with the airport economist and a few people that already have a brand placement in the space. Yep. What is it that they want to do in the next two years? You know, what is that brand going to, what is that effort and facilitation going to do for them in the future? And that could be for you as well, whether it's speaking engagements, whether it's a new career, whether it's become a niche specialist in a marketplace, um, whether it's allow, allowing you to talk about your passion, which may not be your work or, or whatever it is. Um, is it for you to reach out lead generation? Is it, what is it, what is it that you're doing this for? And then we can really customize the effort and the time, the channels, the placement and the work that you do. Yep. Um, so if you look at the, the top end and a lot of people do this with sport as well, they always look at the, 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 the top football player and say, yeah. Oh, you know, but we've got to learn, you've got to learn how to kick a ball first before you can be, you know, um, David Beckham or, or whoever. Yeah. Um, so everybody always talks to me about, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. Yep. or Naomi Simpson, or, you know, these, these bigger brands. Um, but the reason why they've succeeded and others aren't known in the digital space is they had a very clear purpose and reason for why they were doing what they were doing. Yes. Um, okay. you know, and that was from the very outset. That shaped everything from their brand message, their activity online, the, the level to which they share, their real-time live engagement, which is an awesome opportunity for anybody building a personal brand at the moment. Yep. Um, but they had a very structured plan. So the first thing I do is find out the why. Yeah. Uh, then we find out the where. You know, where where is your passion? Where is where are your skill sets? Uh -huh. Where is the uniqueness in your brand? What's your tone? Yeah. You know, how do people relate? How do you already relate in real life? I mean, what what is it that you you do? And and again, one of the biggest mistakes is that everybody thinks they need to be a Gary Vaynerchuk. They need to yeah. be loud and in your face, and mm. and that's just not true. Um, you can be, um, and no offense to programmers, I'm not saying all creatives, but you can be a quiet creative and still be a leading brand position. Yes. Create a leading brand position in, in your market. Or you can be a very small business. Yep. And create a leading um, uh, message that allows you to leverage your business sales in the yep. right market. Um, there's many, many case stories of small businesses. I think there was one in the US that sold curtain rails, wooden curtain rails. Yeah. Or Nate became the most popular brand uh, in their space and thus boomed their business, outstripping the, the big retailers um, by effectively focusing on what they were communicating on a daily basis. But again, it's a strategy and a plan. So we sit down, we find out the why, the where, and then we work on the when. So when, you know, when are you going to have time? When is your commitment going to come in? Yeah. Um, and then, and, and finally, the content piece itself. Uh, yeah, which we'll talk about. Yeah, sure. And so what? So, yeah, I suppose that leads into the next question: is to once people have done that, I think it's awesome. To clarify, you know, objectives and um, a, a, and the goals around it. But then, what can people do to get their reach or extend their reach once they get to that point? Um, it's a common question. It's a bit like the old likes question: what can I do to to get more likes, or what can I do to get more? I think the first thing anybody needs to do on a personal level, if it was something just for today, if you were going to look at your personal brand for today, yeah, it's going to be one, do some work and find out where your audience is. Find mm -hmm. out what you want to talk to them about and then find other people talking about that. Yep. Because one of the biggest mistakes is the, the, lone, the lone voice in the wilderness effect. Yeah. Which is, I have a, I have a, I'm a, I'm a digital marketing professional. There's many, many people who've already done all the hard work for me. Yeah. They already have communities, like you guys. You have communities. Yeah. That I can talk to. Um, doing more traditional work and finding those, those, those situations and getting yourself involved in other communities that are already there, rather yeah. than trying to come off from the bat of, I need to build a, a ready audience. 
Yeah. I know, I know we've talked about in the past, uh, there's no such thing as community. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is an, an available audience. Uh, like a rock concert, they don't come and all chat to each other uh, day in, day out. They come for the event. So yeah. if there are audiences like that in your niche field, then you've got to build a list, find out where they are, engage, and then the tail into that is that you're going to get further reach rather than just setting up a platform and saying, okay, I'm going to have to drive everybody to me. I'm yes. going to have to own that keyword space. That's, that's great for a massive brand because they have budget and time. Um, yeah. But identify and in all practicality, we've been we've been um, misled by a lot of social media experts. Yeah. Uh, social media and, and content is seventy percent off channel. It doesn't exist in Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter and whatever. These are facilitators. Yeah. They're literally where content and messaging gets passed from one place to another. So you've got to get off. You can do it through those channels, but you've got to get off the the channel. And start yeah. looking at the open web and becoming yeah. an expert at finding those places. So uh, that's the first thing. And the next is uh, don't be afraid to get niche um, in, in everything that you do. Uh, yeah. So uh, we were talking about Twitter, obviously LinkedIn, there's a whole bunch of other channels out there. Yeah. Um, but you can really dominate in a channel that's not, not one of the main players if it yeah. serves your market sector. Yeah. Um, and yeah, get okay. niche. About that. Mm. And, and what's the best way for someone that's looking to find one of these audience that you mentioned, you know, what, what is the best approach? How can they do that? Well, it really depends on um, your industry sector or, again, the reason for why you're doing this. Um, okay. if, it's, if it's a sales lead generation thing, then obviously uh, setting up uh, Google uh, uh, keyword searches and, and trying to track the audience, uh, following content back to the source. So if it's a topic area. Yeah. Um, don't just read the article. Look at who the writer is. Find out what, whether they have a community online. Uh, one of the things that people do forget is that if you're interested and passionate about what you're doing anyway, you'll be knowledgeable. I, I, I've read more articles, more five or six articles this morning before I even got into the office yeah. about what, what I do. Hmm. Right? There's writers there that have tailed communities that are, that are, if they're interested in that writer, they're interested in you, if that's yeah. what you do. So yeah. it isn't just search online, let's find the big players. Look at PR, look at um, news press outlets and, and find out where that content. Go to the video hubs and, and, and look at their audiences. One of the tricks I showed you was uh, real time matters in social when you're building out audience. Often forgotten that um, it isn't just yeah. about, okay, I found this community and I'm going to, going to hit them all up. It's about what are you offering them in real time that they're going to engage yes. with and then you're going to re-engage with them. So. Go out and find an audience and try that. Try to, to be part of that conversation. Um, and focus. And, and just focus. Be niche. Uh, uh, yeah. The internet is billions, obviously billions and billions and billions of people uh, out there, yeah. platforms out there competing for micro moments of attention. Yeah. So really mm -hmm. important for everybody to, to kind of not get overwhelmed by that and say, all right, I have a strategic plan over the next six months. I'm going to build out this channel with this audience and I'm going to look at these authors, these publishers or uh, these celebrities even or, or even peers in my industry say, well, LinkedIn's great at that. Um, there are lots yep. of tips and tricks that you can use in LinkedIn where you're not having to interrupt or connect with people but you're forming a network that allows people to, to come to you. I think and I mentioned to yeah. you, um, you know, when you said who, who do you want, how do you want people to connect, uh, you know, I said, well, LinkedIn would be great but um, unless you mention um, the XY Live in the top comment, I get, I get yeah. 30, 40 connection requests a day. Uh, yeah. Not because I'm famous, but because I have a network that pretty much when anybody comes into that network, they'll see 20 or 30 similar connections if they're in my industry sector. So they feel yeah, comfortable yeah. To, to connect. Yeah. Mm. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to turn it over to Phil, who I think has got a couple of questions. Just for everyone watching in, if anyone's got any questions, um, for Paul, you can type them in the comments <coughs> box on the, the right hand side and, uh, and, we'll, and we'll get to them shortly. Yeah, I've got a few questions for you, Paul. Thanks heaps. I, I'm loving the interview. I, I kind of love uh, the way you're talking about your, your process, uh, where you're talking about, um, you know, starting to talk about 
you know, why, what's the purpose of, of starting a personal brand and then going deeper and talking about, you know, what, what are we going to do over the next 12 months and then also what the passion is. Um, I think it's super valuable. It's, and, I mean, this is probably one of the more popular uh, XY lives we've had so far. Uh, and it uh, obviously talks about the good content that we're producing. I've got a few questions. I mean, I've got like two pages full of, of stuff I'll that I've written down. Um, I'll get to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I'll, I'll keep it short. I'll pick a few um, ones that I um, liked best. So um, is, first question, is it important to build a plan before you start your um, building your personal brand? So you said talking about what's the plan over the next 12 months. How um, uh, set do you need your plan to be before you actually go out and start doing it? I think it's like uh, working out in the gym. Um, those who plan, plan, who don't plan, plan to fail. There are unique individuals who automatically, uh, they, they, they blaze a, a brand trail of their own without plan. And that organically happens because that's their nature, that's their character, that's who they are. But for the rest of us mere mortals, yes, you need to plan. Um, this is a saturated, complex, ever-evolving uh, space. And one of the things that I talk to uh, brand clients about is being consistent, continuous, and clear. You have to have a commitment to this. Um, this, this if it works for you as an organic thing and you're not going to put any money into it, and you don't have to, um, but you need to be 100% committed to a plan. Now, the other thing that I talk a lot about is the difference between personal and professional branding um, and keeping a line between mm -hmm. those things. Without a plan and without setting up channel and making sure that you've got the key messaging, that's going to get blurry. Um, I have over six different Facebook pages. I have multiple accounts on multiple platforms. I have over 18 different Twitter handles. Um, mm -hmm. But that's planned. There is a plan, some use for work, some use for personal, some are branded, and some you will hear me politically rant or you will hear me, and that's my, my inner network, which we all need. So there's a strategic plan. Yeah. And without it, you can make uh, uh, inroads somewhere that, that, are, that are pointless to your brand purpose, you know, uh, that aren't going to serve your overall goal. So if I work with David Koch, we you know, we talk about what is it uh, that he would like to be doing in two or three years time that he's not doing today? What is his brand going to allow him to do? Is it to, you know, film documentaries in Africa about elephants? Is it, you know, what is it that his personal brand is going to allow? And, and you've got to plan to get to that point. Now, the strategic mechanics of it is why do you come to somebody like me? But no, the, the strategic mechanics of it um, uh, means that it might just be focusing on one channel, one location. It might also be moving to a different content medium. Um, there are people in the YouTube, look, for example, there are people in the YouTube space who have built a personal brand four or five years ago in the other, what we call just comms channels, who are now having to restart their whole audience in the YouTube channel. Right, they're, they're having to, because they now want to be a, a, a face celebrity or a face known, yeah. you know? Uh, now, I'm not saying they made a mistake. I'm just saying that they, they had, if they had planned that this was their goal, then necessarily mm -hmm. they could have shortened that whole process and, and really focused on, on those things. So um, the, the next is commitment. And, and it is really a serious question. Um, are you committed? Nobody, nobody yeah. uh, can do the personal interaction for you. Nobody can do the shots of you getting in and out of a cab on a busy day and, and saying to your audience, you know, giving them access to you personally. Um, you know, I, I just landed in Hong Kong or, or, I, or even if you're a small business, you know, really excited, uh, best shopping day we've ever had or whatever it is. And, and those elements are about your brand. You've got to be committed and you've got to be open to do that. And without a plan, sometimes those things... Um, and I, and I, I had a go at Ben, but, uh, you know, I'm glad to see the, uh -huh. the, the advice that I gave him. He actually did. Um, and, 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 the, yeah. and then if he keeps it up, so if he keeps that up 15 minutes a day, if he just keeps that up and doesn't stop, then... Do you think that's enough, Paul? I, I, what, what I told you? No. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I think saving I, your secrets. What's going on? <laughs> no, I, I think yeah. that's 
that's a that's a thing that as a, as advisors we don't do very well. Lots of people will get on the blogging space or start videos, and they'll do they'll get excited <laughs> for three months and then just quit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, de- definitely being consistent is 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 something that I if, you know myself looking at other advisors and and, and personal brands that I follow, uh, it's because they're consistent is is why I continue to follow them. Yeah. So look, um, the other thing I really want to point out to advisors, especially. Um, don't be afraid that we're all sitting here talking about brands and videos and whatever. Advisors may not have time or the will or the need to create content on their own. That doesn't mean that you can't be socially active with your brand and build a brand Mm -hmm. presence by doing some really key niche strategic things in the space. So we are talking to Mm -hmm. advisors through the AFA and through advisor ratings and a whole bunch of other platforms recently. You know, those tips and tricks um, looking at the PR sites, looking at the review sites, how your advisors are being reviewed and, and where that works, looking at other content streams that are coming in for the advisor set market. Yeah. Um, yep. And then having a plan to work with that. Now, consistent posting of content is great, but also um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes a day in the afternoon. I know it's a real pain, but you book in, you book in your lunch, right? You, you've got half an hour for lunch. You, you book in a lot of things in your day. You have a shower and you brush your teeth. Uh, if you could yeah. do 10 minutes of just personal brand building by hitting up key areas on the web for you, for your brand, um, mm-hmm. you'll be amazed. Compound interest, advisors should know about that. Um, but yeah, 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 compound interest is what works. Um, people say to me, so Paul, why do you have 15,000 on this channel, 20,000 on that channel, 30,000 on that channel? God, you must, you must be really popular. No, no. It's just seven years of consistent building. Um, yeah. I have some channels about different things. So that's all I'm trying to get across there. It doesn't have to be a massive strategy. It doesn't have to be all consuming. It's just, just get practical, get consistent get engaged, um, you don't have to create content. Um, you can, yeah, you can yeah. facilitate content, you can comment on content, you can you can do all those you know things, but um, I would advise anybody to sit down like you would with self-help or self-development, but sit down, write down those columns. What am I particularly good at? What is it that, that I'm passionate about so that this energy is not gonna disappear from me? What is it yeah. that I, I consume already on Pulse or or on any of the feeds? Um, and then is my can I make my personal brand about that and also meet my goals to build my business or meet my goals to become a speaker or meet my goals to, um, you know, get more business leads or meet my goals to whatever it is? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, awesome. Them together. No, great. All right, we've got some questions from the audience, so we'll just try and uh, hammer through these. Uh, so Mark uh, has asked, um, does it have to be a personal brand um, and can it not be a personable corporate brand? And, and what's the distinction? <laughs> I work with personable corporate brands all the time. Um, so the, uh, let's get one thing out of the way. Honesty and trust and reality are, are, are paramount if you're going to create a personal brand. Yes, it can be a corporate personal brand, but you still need to be, because you'll get eaten alive if, if you switch honesty or trust or do all those things, mm. get that out of the way. Um, there is a big difference between a corporate brand or your professional brand and your personal brand. And it really comes down to tone, language, and expectation of the audience. And the biggest forgotten thing when we talk about a professional personal brand or a professional business brand is that people think about the brand and what the brand wants rather than thinking about what the audience wants and how much they want to engage or where they mm. engage. Um, so there are some boundaries that we set for brands, for example, in non-moderation of content, if it's a, if it's a professional, personal brand, where we don't respond because we don't get involved in opinion conversations. That's a boundary with which we don't have the brand talk. It talks relaxed in its tone to the audience uh, and is trying to, uh, we didn't really get into content, all content has a purpose, but each piece of content will have a purpose for a brand. So whether it's entertainment, channel building, uh, whether it's promotional, uh, whether it's UGC generation or trying to get user generated content out of our audience, each piece of content has a purpose, same with the personal brand. So it's the tone with which that's used that has to be very clear. Now, a true personal brand that isn't professional or not 
let's say not not professional, but is used to help amplify a business later on. Like mm. again, I know the audience may not know Gary Vee, but um, he's always a good example because he's he's hitting the the airwaves now about this. But um, he uses his personal brand to support a four million four hundred million dollar a year business. Mm. But he maintains his yeah. personal brand as Frank, direct, advice, swearing, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. But he also has a business brand with Viner Media mm. that has its channels, and that is what we would call a soft, personal, professional brand. Yeah, yeah. Where the language is different, and the level of engagement is different, and also the expectation of the audience is different. And, and what I wanted to get to for all that was the expectation of the audience. What is the audience? How does the audience want to engage? Yeah. Are they going to be satisfied with engaging with a brand, a professional soft brand, or do they want a real connection? Um, yeah. and, and that's kind of a call that you make when you talk about your effort. So if, um, sorry, I forgot who asked the question. Was it John? Did I get uh, Mark. No, Mark? Yeah. So if Mark's looking to build a business off the back of his brand, then a soft professional brand probably will work. Um, but if, if Mark's trying to build a, 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 a network of lead generated professionals in the space, then a real personal brand is probably a better play. Um, yeah. but, but what I'm saying is you you still, on all of that, you still need to be 100% committed to consistent, clear, and continuous content, but also honest. You yeah. have to be no, I love, I love what you said. I love what you said. Uh, regardless if it's personal or corporate or whatever, make sure you're thinking about what the audience wants. Um, that, that, that to me is great kind of yeah, um, I, take away from it. I'll, I'll give people, one of the things we talk about when we talk about uh, community management training Never ever write a piece of content for the content title. Write the piece of content for the first comment you expect to see in the comment section. Then you're writing what I call made for social or made for digital content. Yeah. If you, if you write something or create a video and you in your mind have what the first comment's going to be from the first person that sees it and you write to that, then you're going to have content that potentially works to, to cut through the noise. If yeah. you write for the heading, awesome. then then what are you writing for? You're writing for you. Um, that or you're you're producing for you or you're getting an image for you. Mm. That's the difference between the big barrier of content content is just hitting a silent wall of people going, I've seen this, I don't I don't care. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're gonna go go through some more questions and we are running over time, but I'm making an executive right. decision to, <laughs> to run over. Because uh, I think that uh, it's really interesting, but we'll try and uh, be quick, oh, sharp down. answers. Yeah, really short. So, um, what makes good content good from Chris? Uh, what makes good content good? Um, I think good content has the three elements to it for everybody, um, whether it's a short form piece or, or what have you. Um, it gains interest, it leaves open to opinion. And it allows for share. So those are the, for me, the three things. So uh, if you ever wondered why something gets shared, it's basically because, it, like the, the old newspapers have the headings. It is what is that? I don't know what that is. I need to. What's the interest there? Mm. Oh, that was clever. Um, I didn't see that coming. Um, and then it's not so scripted or branded that it prevents people from sharing it. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, and from James, I just lost it. Uh, on the back of Mark's question uh, about a corporate, uh, personable corporate brand, um, how do you build both personal and business brands um, when you've got uh, uh, a business with more than one um, founder? So there's so James has got three co-founders. Um, so how do they both build a, a corporate brand and a personal brand when the co-founders have different personalities and interests? Well, it's great. Your, your co-founders have different personalities and interests. You would need to sit down and, and just decide amongst yourselves what, what each brand is for. And then that really is as it, it, simple as anything else. It's like uh, we have three or four people here who are in management. I'm the speaking guy. Uh, David's the TV guy. There's others. Uh, and just define w what purpose each brand has. And there's no harm in having two um, to lead the business. But normally I would suggest that one of you is going to be better at... Um, at the, being the front man for the social space on their personal mm -hmm. level, if they're the, the experts. Got to be you, James. Yeah, James is very good looking. They're guys, very so good looking. He'd be the one. The um, yeah. And then the other can focus on the business um, and uh, or the business side of it. Uh, yeah. It's it's like anything. Just just take it up a level and, and really once you set those goals, just figure out who who's going to do what. 
because that's a great combination and people don't have that. They have themselves mm. and they go, oh, I'm not really that guy. Well, if you have both, then that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Naomi's asked, what's your thoughts on email content marketing? Um, look, email content marketing is, is still a, a powerhouse uh, to what we do. Um, how effectively it's done um, is questionable. Um, I probably need to know a little bit more about what, what you're looking for in the answer there because um, it's such a wide wide sector for us at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. Uh, is... Um, is it getting to the point where it's too spammy because everyone is doing uh, email marketing uh, or is there ways to do it effectively? So Naomi again, back on email marketing. Yeah, look, marketing. That, that's, that's clear. Yeah. Um, yes, there are effective ways to do it. Um, no, it's not getting more, any more spammy than it used to be. Uh, the saturation isn't any more or less. It's just the way that people manage it, the tools with which people manage their email, the mm. divided mailbox, all those other stuff. It's a technical question that you need to get smart about in terms of doing it effectively. And you can research on headlines, you can research on um, frequency, you can research on spend, you can research on, um, and well, the other thing I would say, do some research on non-email email platforms. So your in-mails for LinkedIn and your other uh, access points that are email driven. Um, have a look at the overall technical pie, and I can't get down to absolute specifics, and you know, unless it's a kind of a brand case study. But no, look, I, I, this is the same thing as people say: Are we over content saturated? No, we're not. Um, mm. The digital space is evolving to handle the volume. We've just got to evolve to make sure that our content is of value, as with any other channel, and really understand how it gets from A to B. But it's still the one of the most effective ways to uh, to engage. I think um, we have about 30, 40 percent of our traffic still coming from that source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and, and it's so easy to opt out these days, and we, and we do we do naturally, um, or we opt in, sorry, um, to what we want to see anyway. So um, getting emailed once a day isn't so much of a hassle. Yeah, um, but also keep in mind that the control is now on the other side. So um, the way people uh, run their personal lives, the way they run their business, depending on the emails that are coming through, uh, I'll go through phases where I will check all of my group in discussions for LinkedIn. This was last year. I don't do it now. I've moved past that. But um, I never went onto the LinkedIn uh, unless uh, it was a click through from an email. Uh, mm. I would see that the headings of 40, 50 different groups with top topics and scan them in about 10 seconds. Just go down, boom, 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 boom. Oh, that's a current content piece is gonna help my brand. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so everybody's gonna behave differently. So I, I, yeah, I, there is an, a, a, people feel the need to excuse to say, hey, it's oversaturated, it doesn't work. Um, but that's the case for every channel. It's those who do it effectively. And again, back to the very beginning of the conversation, every single business brand advisor person has the ultimate opportunity currently to power their business or build their brand just as much as, uh, you know, a Bill Gates or anybody else. So you, you, yeah. you really do. There is no boundary to it. You've just got to get smart about it. Awesome. I think this has been an amazing interview. Um, and just to finish off, uh, what is the best way for people to either connect to you or if people want to work with you? Um, what is it, what's the best way to get in touch? Um, uh, easy way to break it down on the, uh, on the brand side, on the advisor side, uh, Pinstripe Media, um, we're always available. Uh, so we, we look after as we, we went through. On the personal side, um, at Request Media, at underscore Request Media on Twitter, uh, you can hit me up there or grab me through LinkedIn, uh, just Paul J. Gilbert. Uh, there's a lot of Paul Gilberts on LinkedIn. So yeah. just look for the Make sure you're going to connect with Paul on LinkedIn. He told me that one thing he hates is when people just send a blank connection oh, invitation. Yeah. If so you send, just the generic right one. If you send me a blank, um, don't expect a reply. Uh, I, don't care, <laughs> I don't care who you are. Um, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, for this instance, if you've been online now, which is fantastic, and thanks for watching, um, K uh, X Y Live. If you just put that in the um, in the in the first line, um, then I can siphon through really quickly without having to read every one of them. Great, awesome, really awesome. awesome. Thanks, um, so thanks, Paul, and thanks everyone for coming on. I uh, I know we went over time. Um, 
but uh, I think it was great value um, that we got out of it. Uh, so next four nights, uh, we have... Dean Holmes. Dean Holmes on. And what's Dean speaking about, Ben? He's going to... Well, Dean's currently living in the UK but running his business over here. Um, so Dean's going to talk about how he does that and and, uh, and manages his business remotely. So, uh, yeah, I, I think he's doing some pretty cool stuff and I, I think it's uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good session. Brilliant. Yeah, cool. And... And we also um, have a newsletter that goes out once a week um, just to keep you updated with what's going on with the XY Live. So I've chucked the link in the, um, the live chat and it'll be in the description on the YouTube channel as well as subscribing to the YouTube channel. So thanks, everyone, for coming on board and watching today. And thanks again, Paul. It was really great. Thanks, Thank you. guys. Thanks, Paul. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.